Hi, I'm Ken Anderson, and I'm coming on the I Only Touch Greatness podcast. Looking for the most beers on tap? Great steaks, great staff. Head over to the John B. Pub. We got the best beers, steaks, chicken wings, nachos in town. Come see us at the John B. Pub. The John B. Pub, the best bar in town. Come sign up for our football pool. Say hey, St. you. The number one sports podcast in Vancouver with Ryan Hayes and Big Mike. Ryan Hayes and Big Mike are taking over the podcast scene in Vancouver. Get down or lay down. I'm a huge Bengals fan, so it's an honor. I, uh, thank you very much, Ken. The pleasure's mine. Thanks, guys. As you can see, though, I'm a Seahawks fan. <laughs> we won't hold that against you. No, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, born in Illinois. Uh, give us a little bit about childhood and uh, when and how the football started for you. Well, I grew up in Batavia, Illinois, which was uh, a town at that time of about 10,000, a little farm town about 40 miles west of Chicago. There wasn't a lot to do, so you played every sport that was in season. Uh, I happened to have a neighbor, our backyard's connected, a guy named Dan Issel, who's an NBA Hall of Famer, a year older, and then we kind of did everything that was in season. You know, it's if when football came, you're playing touch football in the backyard. When basketball came, you're shoveling snow and, uh, and playing on the driveways. Uh, my dad happened to be the janitor at the high school, so on bad weather, uh, we had on the weekends we could probably get in the gym if we had to, and then in the spring you waited for uh, Street Smith's baseball magazine to come out and you played baseball. So you know, and, and when you go to a small high school, my graduating class was 125, but to make the numbers, if uh, you know, if you wanted to play basketball or wrestle, you had to go out for cross country or football, and then okay. if you wanted to play baseball or run track, you had to go out for basketball or wrestling. So. The coaches kind of kept the numbers up that you know, everybody had to try out for other sports as well. Okay. Um, if you could have dinner, if you were having a dinner party and you wanted to invite three people, anyone you wanted, dead or alive, who would you, who would you want to invite? Oh, I don't know. Uh, maybe Billy Wade. He was uh, the first quarterback idol I, I had when he played for the Chicago Bears when I w- was growing up. Uh, I always idolized Bart Starr. I thought if I could, you know, play like yeah. him, I might be, uh, you know, a successful quarterback. And, uh, geez, Gail Sayers was the best running back I've ever seen. Okay. So that would that would be a nice dinner. There you that go. would be a solid dinner. 
Uh, and then uh, probably the biggest day in your career, uh, drafted in 71 to the Bengals, 67th overall. Can you take me back to draft day? Well, you know, I, I was out at Augustana and uh, I, I didn't have any money. And so the local college bar, uh, you know, gave me a quarter barrel of beer on credit, fig figuring I might get drafted that day. And then, uh, you know, late in the afternoon, Bill Walsh called me and said I was a third round draft choice. So that was kind of exciting. And then, you know, flew down the next day and, uh, you know, went down there and the draft was still the second day of the draft was still going on. And, you know, got to meet Paul Brown in his office. And of course, I was in awe. And I'd never seen a mini cam before and they're doing interviews and went out to dinner that night with Bill Walsh and Mike Brown, who negotiated the contracts. And, you know, about 10 o'clock, we went back to the stadium. And, uh, you know, Mike said, we're going to offer you a contract for 18000 20 and 22000 and a $7,500 signing bonus. And I was thinking to myself, you know, I'm okay with the 18000 because I had a teaching job lined up in Chicago. That was only for five grand. But I, for somehow I, I said, uh, I want $10,000 for a signing bonus. And he pulled a check out of his pocket, made out to me for seventy five hundred. Said, "This is what you're going to get." And so I signed my contract. It took five minutes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's awesome, <laughs> Mike. And then, uh, yeah, can you take me back to your first touchdown? Gosh, I don't know. Wow, I don't think it was the first game. I got in the first game of the year because I was backing up Virgil Carter. In Virgil those Carter, days, yep. you only. You only carried two quarterbacks, and, and I we were beating them handily, so I got in a little bit. I don't think I threw a touchdown past that game. And then in the third game of the year, we were up in Green Bay, and he uh, broke his collarbone, and I went in. I think my first touchdown pass may have been to Speedy Thomas. Okay, okay. And I think it, was, it might, have been a, might have been on Q8 option, a little uh, pass play inside the five-yard line. Perfect, perfect. You always remember your first one. And then uh, in 1974, kind of you were in full force and uh, starting your amazing career as one of the best Bengals ever. Uh, 75, man of the year, first Pro Bowl and passing yards leader. What do you think uh, made you have such a successful season? Well, you know, it, it's always because you have good people around you. And, and, and I was very fortunate that, you know, my head coach was Paul Brown, one of the greatest of all time. And my first offensive coach was Bill Walsh, you know, for my first five years. And, you know, I had a, a great draft class in 1971. Jim Plunkett was the first draft choice. Then it was Archie Manning, number two, Dan Pastorini, number three. Lynn Dickey wow. won the third round along with me. And then after Bill Theisman went. So we had, we had a good draft class. And uh, I think Sports Illustrated did an article a, a year or so ago about that draft class. And, and Jim Plunkett made the comment that I was the lucky one of the group that I got to go to Cincinnati with a stable franchise with Paul Brown as the head coach and, and Bill Walsh. And, and, and certainly he kind of, you know, guided me and, and took me from a, a small college quarterback to an NFL quarterback. And, and I owed him a lot. What are you, do you have any hidden talents? Pardon me. I, I, you broke up a little bit. And I'm sorry. Oh. I didn't hear that. Okay. Uh, do you have any hidden talents? Uh, none. Uh, I, I like to play golf and I'm, I'm mediocre at that. Uh, I can mow a mean lawn, you know. My <laughs> lawn. Hey, that's a talent. You know, I got an Echo PE 200, which is one wheel, one blade, and it's gas, and I, I'm a, a great edger. So uh, working in the yard, and and I think maybe the big thing is I might be a pretty good grandpa. I've got yeah. six grandchildren. I, I think they think I might be a pretty good guy. There you uh, go. Okay, okay. You got one and of the ride, not, the, the ride on lawnmower? No, 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 no. They always push. Yeah, always, always. But now it is self-propelled. I will say that. That's what my dad had. Yeah. And you, you can't go riding. No. No. <laughs> and then uh, 1981, uh, you led our Bengals to the Super Bowl against Montana's 49ers. Uh, take me back to that game. Well, you know, I, I think that was a magical season for us. You know, we were uh, probably the worst team that I played on uh, all my years was the 1979 Bengals. And, you know, the coach got fired. Force Greg came in and, you know, we had drafted Jack Thompson to throw in Samoan as my replacement. And, and so, you know, 80, we, you know, we were kind of getting better. You could tell we we're going to be pretty good. And, you know, the, 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 the fans were clamoring for Jack Thompson as the 81 season started and, you know, and, and the opening game, you know, I threw three interceptions against the Seattle Seahawks, I might add. 
<laughs> um, uh, and I got I got benched uh, at the end of the first quarter, and and Jack Thompson was hurt, and uh, they put in our third quarterback, Turk Schoner, rallied us. We won twenty seven to twenty one, and this is probably as low as I've ever been in, in my career. And after some talks with uh, with Forrest Gregg and that, the next week I ended up starting against the Jets. And, you know, we were and we were kind of off to the races from there. And then you obviously had the career year, MVP, Burt Bell Award, Comeback Player Award, Offensive Player of the Year Award, and First Team All Pro that same year. Uh, what was it like being honored as MVP of the whole league? Well, you know, and, and again, it, it was a great honor. And I remember, you know, I, I went off to the Pro Bowl after we got beat against San Francisco. I'd done a couple of things. And so the, the, the official NFL MVP award is the, the Burt Bell Award. And, uh, you know, it was going to be in a dinner in Philadelphia, and they wanted me to come. And, and I was tired, and I said, you know, I, I don't think I can make it. And uh, I got a call from Commissioner Roselle. He said, you will attend. We'll send a plane for you. So I had a, a private jet to go to the dinner to get that award. But, you know, it's, it's tough because those are, although it's an individual award, it's a team award. You know, if I don't have Anthony Munoz and Max Montoy and Blair Bush and Lapham, you know, and Mike Wilson up front and, and Isaac Curtis and Collinsworth and, you know, Pete Johnson in the backfield, Danny Ross, ML Harris's tight ends, you know, I don't win that award. Yeah, we had a good team, that's for sure. And what, what 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 kind of a teammate was Collinsworth? Oh, he he was great. Now he came in as that aw shucks guy from Titusville, Florida as a rookie, but he could play. And uh, you know, he was, you know, six five with the long legs, yeah. but but he knew how to play football. And you know, he, he went to Florida as a quarterback. And then actually I think still is tied for the school record, you know, throwing a ninety nine yard touchdown pass. You know, so he always saw the game from that perspective, from a receiver's point, what the quarterback is seeing. And I think that really helped him out as a rookie. And of course, you know, he had over a thousand yards and went to the Pro Bowl as a rookie. Yeah, I've met him once actually at CenturyLink Field in Seattle, or it was CenturyLink. But yeah, he was doing like the Monday night or Sunday night Sunday game. Night. Sunday night Sunday. game. Yeah, he was doing the Sunday night game and we were there for the game and I got close enough to get a picture. And back then, I didn't... Uh, I didn't even think to get an autograph. No, no. <laughs> uh, you know, Chris is a, a super guy. He's been a, a great friend of mine, you know, for a lot of years. And, and I'll see him uh, September 30th, um, that Thursday night game. Uh, I'm lucky enough to be inducted into the, the Bengals' first ring of honor. Yeah. Ring of honor, baby. Woo. At, at halftime, but they're also going to honor the 81 Super Bowl team. And uh, since it's on a Thursday night, Chris will be able to be there. So I'll, I'll get to see him that night. All right, perfect. Mike, you uh... – Yeah, there's my uh, Super Bowl cup right there from that year. Well, yeah, that's I, that's, I like that. You know what look, really looked good in there is uh, I'm coming out with my own beer in Cincinnati. And oh, we really? Wanted, we wanted it to be a, a light beer. We wanted it to be a, a beer that you can uh, tailgate with. And, you know, sometimes if you go on and you drink an IPA, they're heavier. You can only drink a couple. This is – uh, this is one you want to drink a lot of, so it's called Kenny's Day Drinking Lager. So that oh, okay. will that will make its debut at the start of the season. All right. Oh, right on, right on. That's awesome. I'll have to get my hands on that. Even though we're in Canada, I'll have to figure it out somehow. Well, go go <laughs> on the Ken Ander go on the Ken Anderson Alliance uh, uh, dot com uh, or dot org website. Uh, or sixteen lots is uh, the brewery that's coming out with them in Cincinnati. It could be the best can I've ever seen. So you got to take a look okay. at that one. Okay, absolutely. I'll have to check that out. Uh, you, you obviously shared the field with many great players, running back and wide receivers. Who would you say the best uh, running back and best wide receiver you did play with? A uh, best wide receiver, no doubt. It's Isaac Curtis, and you know he was as good as anybody in the National Football League then or now. I mean, this guy—he was a, a world-class sprinter that. Although he was a football player that was a world-class sprinter, not like some of those guys that were sprinters that tried to play football. And Isaac had great hands, he had great moves, and he had great speed. And as far as the running back, you know, I'm going to go back to the, the early 70s. We had a guy from Grambling named Essex Johnson, number 19. Okay. was really good. And unfortunately, in the 73 playoff game uh, against the Dolphins, he hurt his knee. It was never quite the same, but... He was as good as anybody we had. He was a, 
you know, very much like another uh, running back I had later on in my career, which was James Brooks. Yeah, he was awesome. He was awesome. I and see, then, uh, what's well, that, right? I, I see all the memorabilia behind you. Do you have a favorite piece of memorabilia that you've collected over the years? Well, um, it really uh, up in the, the corner here, and, and it's away from you, but um, I have my first Pro Bowl helmet. Um, our equipment manager happened to be passed away. And, and that was the years that they took your helmet and they, they painted them, uh, you know, red. And uh, it's got a, a white A on it for AFC. And uh, the equipment man, Tom Gray, his son had it. And I saw him down there, uh, down in, in Hilton Head a couple years ago. And we have a Bengals bar down here. And he was down for the weekend. He brought that down. He says, my dad would really like you to have this. So that's, that's probably as nice a possession as I've got. Mike, you got awesome. to get to Cincinnati, Mike, and see a game. I do. I do. It's been a dream on. I got to make it happen. Yeah. Um, and how was it uh, holding that record for a completion percentage for 30-plus years and then having Drew Brees break it? Well, I, Drew, Drew, Drew Brees wouldn't play the last game of the year. You know, so I still, I still may have had it then. And I, That's I don't true. know. Although I, I think he's broken it a couple of times since then too. But <laughs> you know, it, it was in a strike shortened year, and so we, we only played nine games. But you know, Sammy Baugh, and I still threw about a hundred more passes than he did uh, when he broke that record. So I think it was pretty legit. Uh, and then you got into broadcasting. Uh, did you enjoy it? Well, I, I really wasn't very good at it. Uh, you know, I, uh, I did a, a morning radio show with the morning G DJ was a good friend of mine. That was, and he was a funny guy. And, you know, my first sports report was at five 30. So that was probably the best job I ever had. And, and then we also had a TV station uh, across the hall. And so, you know, and that ended at 10 o'clock, I'd go there and I do some sports reporting and I ended up the sports anchor that, uh, that our big boss wanted me to do that. And, that wasn't really what I wanted to do. And, uh, you know, I always, I went to, to college to be a, a high school math teacher and football and basketball coach. I always wanted to be a coach. And, you know, I thought when my football career ended, I, I would go into coaching and everybody says, oh man, you're stupid if you want to do that. You know how much time it takes, how much you're away from your family, you know, the sacrifices. And I said, well, I didn't want to be an idiot. So I, I, I didn't go into coaching. And, but after six years of broadcasting, uh, I had a chance, and I, I'll, I'll never, uh, I can never thank Dave Shula enough, who was the head coach of the Bengals uh, at that time, that gave me a chance to, uh, to come in to coach the quarterbacks. Yeah, Bengals, Jags, and then Steelers, where you uh, won a Super Bowl. Yeah, you know, and, and that was, uh, you know, if you remember that season, Ben Roethlisberger had a, a great year. And, uh, you know, uh, all of a sudden, Larry Fitzgerald catches is a, a big pass and we're, we're down at the two minute warning and Ben takes us about 90 yards and, and throws a touchdown pass to Santonio Holmes and uh and we won a Super Bowl and so I, I'm back at uh, the team hotel and you know I, I'm waiting for my my, my 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 wife and my kids to kind of get there on the team buses so I'm in the bar and uh guys Lynn Swan and Joe Green and you know uh Jack Lambert and and Ham and Russ all those guys are there you know, they come, hey, pat me on the back and say, hey, Kenny, congratulations. You finally got a Super Bowl ring. He had to come to Pittsburgh to get it, though. Oh, oh ouch, ouch. <laughs> and then uh, congrats. You already touched on it a bit there, but uh, congrats on being named in the Bengals Ring of Honor this year. Uh, and we all know you're deserving to be in the Hall of Fame as well. Do you know? Well, you know, uh, it's, you know it's kind of fun to be Go ahead. No, I was going to say it's, it's you know what an honor to go into the Ring of Honor in the first class, and and I think the special thing about it is that you know Cincinnati has a, a great football tradition, a winning tradition, and uh, a lot of people in the the national media and around the country don't realize that for what's happened lately, and so this is a chance that we can go back and and look at some of those players from you know I'll even say the '60s and the '70s you know, and realize what great players we had. And, you know, unfortunately, in, in the mid-70s and early 80s, uh, there was this team called the Steelers who was the dynasty of that decade. And uh, yeah. had we not been in the same division as them, I'd had a couple more Super Bowl appearances. So, you know, it was uh, just, like I say, we, we were 
as good as anybody in the team or in the league back in those days. And I'd like people to go back and remember that. Absolutely. And uh, I know you were just bringing up all those Steeler greats. Uh, was there one guy that put a little fear in you? Well, no, I, I you know, it, it's a little bit different in those days. It was a, a very big rivalry, but it was a rivalry of respect. And uh, I think one of the proudest things in, in my career is that if you look back uh, for the number of games that I, you know, when I was the starting quarterback in the National Football League, um, and I, you know, but I say it was one of respect. And, and I remember one time in, in uh, 79, we'd like to say we were, that was the worst team I'd ever play, played on. But, you know, they were in Cincinnati earlier in the year that we were 0 7 and they were 7 0. We beat them 34 to 7. They didn't cry the field in the fourth quarter. Chuck Knoll told his team, if I didn't know you better, I thought you threw the game. But uh, we went up to, to Pittsburgh later on in the year and we were getting killed. And in the fourth quarter, Joe Green sacks me again. And he's laying on top of me, and he says, Kenny, why don't you stop in the locker room for beer after the game? And at the old Three River Stadium, the locker rooms were right next to each other. And so I showered quickly, and I walked around the corner and went into the locker room. And the first guy I see is Terry Bradshaw, and he sees me, and he stops doing his interview and takes me back to the sun in the back of the locker room. And, of course, they had it turned off, but they had a garbage can full of beer in there. And clears it off a couple of seats in the front row, and he and I have two or three beers. I'm feeling better about life. And... I go out to catch the bus <laughs> go to the airport and they've left. And I go, how do I explain that I had, I got fined and had to buy a plane ticket from Pittsburgh to Cincinnati because I'm in the Steelers locker room drinking beer, <laughs> um, walking around looking for a cab. And I, I found the equipment truck going by. I flagged that down and I ride out the airport. And for some reason, the, the plane is late and, you know, we pulled up to the gate and the guy lets me in the side door and everybody's standing around. And, and like I say, we were having a, a bad year that year. And my first thought, I was upset. I said, the starting quarterback's not there. And they didn't know. Then I started thinking, maybe they know. They just don't care. <laughs> true. <laughs> true. <laughs> uh, do, you do you follow the Bengals much these days? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. be up there for opening day. And, of course, the game on the 30th. And, uh, very fortunate when we're down here in Hilton Head, we've got uh, our Bengals bar that gets all the games. So, uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm still looking forward to meeting Joe Burrow. I mean, ever since uh, the draft, you know, when he came in, it's been the COVID era. And every time I'm in Cincinnati, they've still got all the protocols where I can't get near the locker room. So hopefully later on this fall when I'm up there, I'll get a chance to meet him. Yeah, that's yeah, I'm getting I'm. I'm honestly getting excited. I mean, uh, Joe Burrow, we got Mixon in there now. And after drafting Chase and we got T. Higgins, Boyd, I think, uh, I think we're moving in the right direction. Uh, you know, I agree. We got really good weapons. Can those guys up front protect Joe? And I think that's, that's our problem. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I've talked, you know, Dave Lapham uh, is the Bengals radio analyst and it was my roommate for a lot of years in Cincinnati. And he and I talk and, I think uh, we had some guys hurt last year in the offensive line. He thinks the new offensive line coach is, is making a big difference. So uh, I, I've got hopes that the, if the offensive line is good, uh, we'll be pretty good. Hopefully Joel Absolutely. Mixon can have a good year too. Pardon me? Hopefully Joel Mixon can have a good year. Well, I, you know, he's a, he's a really a good running back, you know, and he's good out of the backfield. Bad and just a, a variety and, you know, we just got to be – to stay in games where you can go ahead and try to run the football and, and not have to throw in every down. Yeah. So, uh, Ken, if you had a couple uh, beers in you and you had to sing one karaoke song for a big prize, what are you singing? Oh, wow. You're, you, you got me on that one. I, I can't <laughs> even come up with one at the moment, to be honest with you. <laughs> Hey, what about <laughs> I had a couple of I had a couple of beers in me. I'm sure I might be able to come up with it, yeah. but I can't <laughs> off the top of my head. The uh, do you have a favorite football movie? And do you have a favorite? What's your favorite movie in general? Oh, I I don't know about, about you know the football movie. I I guess it would be that one. Um, gosh, with you know when Gail Sayers got hurt, it, it was him and. Uh, the other running back with the Bears that kind of, uh, you know, helped him, you know, through all the rehabilitation. I can't think of the name of, of that movie, but that would be my favorite football movie, I think. Um, maybe the favorite movie of all time. 
gosh, I don't know. I mean, I like so many different kinds of things. I mean, I like the Godfather. I like the Star Wars. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, when, I, when I'm with my granddaughter, I like Frozen. So <laughs> a wide variety. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, what do you? What else are you up to these days? Uh, I heard something about coffee shops or something like that. Well, yeah, our our foundation. Um, we just merged with uh, another nonprofit, and uh, so we have a a building now for our, our corporate offices, but we have some other space as well. And uh, we just opened a, a coffee shop called Just Brew that uh, employs fourteen adults with developmental disabilities. So that's wow. been, been very well. And in the same building, we're doing adult daycare services and music therapy is a large part of that. And so that's been exciting. That's up and running that we're servicing about 80 adults a, a week in that. And then we have our engaged programs where, you know, we, we take these adults out in small groups into the city, whether it's to a ball game, whether it's out to dinner, whether it's to putt-putt. Uh, big, big ones that they like are, are going – uh, to other nonprofits to volunteer. Well, we have over 20 of those, out, those outing a month that serves over 230 adults. So uh, a lot of progress is made in our foundation. What was That's awesome. What was your favorite road stadium or city? Oh, you know, it, the city didn't make any difference because, we, you know, you never left the hotel. Yeah. You know, you, you, would, sure you, you would get there basically. <laughs> yeah, well, not much. Um, but uh, no, I, I tell you what, I always, I always liked playing in the old Cleveland Stadium. Okay, you okay, know, okay. There was, there was the worst locker rooms and the the, the dog pound. Oh, you know, I mean, literally, there's a two by four with nails on it. You put your clothes on. It was the smallest shower, and and you know, you're trying to walk down because you had to walk down from the locker room through the tunnel to the the third base dugout to get out of the the to get out of the field. Well, it was a pretty steep slope, but you always had to wear long cleats because of the grass and they wouldn't put carpeting. So it was just concrete. So you're kind of skating down, you know, <laughs> holding your hands against the wall so you can fall on your ass. But, you know, you got out there and it was just, you know, an old stadium. It's the pillars and it just, you know, dripped with tradition. You know, Otto Graham played there, Marion Motley, Dante Lavelli, you know, Max Speedy, you know, Jim Brown. And uh, so I really like going and playing in that stadium. I had a lot of good games there, too. Absolutely. Uh, did you have any rituals or routines before games? Well, you know, I was, uh, yeah, I was very routine oriented. You know, you get to the stadium at the same time and go out and check the field at the same time and, you know, put your pads in your pants at the same time and get those on and stretch. So, I mean, everything was kind of, you know, by the, by the book for me until I got on the field. So I was always a very nervous guy until I got on the field. And then the nervous kind of went away. Uh, what made you finally call it quits at the end of your career? Well, it was basically because of injuries. You know, it was at the point it was, you know, after my 16th year and, and Boomer size was now the starting quarterback, but you know, my, my shoulder had, had gotten bad. My back had gotten bad and, you know, I, I thought I was doing, you know, pretty good, uh, you know, in the offseason. I was, you know, uh, out of law school at that, that time. I, I had a, a beer business at that time and, you know, went into to a, our, our mini camp in, in, the, in the, the spring. And I thought I was in pretty good shape, but I, I didn't really pass the physical. So that was kind of the end of it for me. Okay, okay. Hey, uh, Ken, I just want to thank you so much uh, for taking the time for us today and coming on and chatting with us. Uh, I'm a huge Bengals fan, as you can see, my wall. And I've been, a, I've been a Bengals fan since my dad bought me a Boomer jersey, actually, when I was a kid. So that's how it all started for me. Uh, well, well, been... I hope you've got a Ken. Whoa, 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 whoa. A Boomer jersey? A Boomer jersey. Oh, you know, you can go to KenAndersonAlliance.org <laughs> by a sign Ken Anderson jersey. Okay, okay. So I, I expect the next time that we talk that you have a standard and there's on. Sounds good. Sounds good. <laughs> like That's I said, awesome. I didn't have a choice on the boomer jersey. It was given to me. I was the baby. <laughs> but now you, but now you do. Yeah. That's right. So That's the, right. The That's next right. time that, the, the next time that we talk, I expect you to have that on. Sounds good. Sounds okay. good. Uh, Looking for the most beers on tap? Great steaks, great staff. Head over to the John B. Pub. We got the best beers, steaks, chicken wings. 
Nachos in town. Come see us at the John B. Pub. The John B. Pub, the best bar in town. Come sign up for our football pool. Say hey, sent you.